Please subscribe to this channel for more videos related to Catholic Christian teaching. The Fourth Lateran Council and the First Vatican Council teach this doctrine. And then the human creature who, as it were, shares in both orders, being of spirit and body composed. In opposition to the teaching of the Church is the exaggerated spiritualism of Plato and the originists, according to which the body is a burden and hindrance to the soul, its prison and grave. In Plato's view, the soul alone makes the man, while the body is only a kind of shadow. The Church, on the contrary, teaches that the body essentially belongs to human nature. When St. Paul speaks of a conflict between the body and the soul, and when he longs to be freed from the body of death, he is not thinking of the body in its physical construction, but in its condition of moral disorder occasioned by sin. Incompatible with church dogma is the trichotomism taught by Plato, the Gnostics, Manichaeans, Apollinarians, and in recent times also by Anton Gunter, according to which man is composed of three essential component parts, the body, an animal soul, and a spiritual soul. For Gnostics, salvation could be achieved through knowledge and not through faith. Gnostic beliefs resemble dualism, which is the view that the universe is structured by two opposing forces, good and evil. Manichaeans believe God was good, but was not all-powerful. Thus, God could not stop evil from happening. Manichaeans believe that the soul was the good part of humanity, while the body was tied to darkness and evil. Apollinarians argued that Jesus had a human body and sensitive human soul, but a divine mind and not a human rational mind, the divine logos taking the place of the latter. Anton Gunter was an Australian Roman Catholic philosopher whose work was condemned by the Church as heretical tritheism, which asserts that, rather than being single God of three eternally consubstantial persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three ontologically separate gods. The Eighth General Council of Constantinople rejected the doctrine of the two souls and laid down the Catholic dogma that man possesses only one single spiritual soul. Man has one rational and intellectual soul. The spiritual soul is the principle of the spiritual mental life and at the same time, the principle of the corporal vegetative and sensitive life. According to the teaching of sacred scripture, man is composed of two essential component parts and will again be separated into two parts. 
And the Lord God formed man out of the slime of the earth, and breathed in his face the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Think of thy Creator before the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the Spirit of God who sent it. The distinction between the soul and the spirit in certain passages of sacred scripture should not be understood in the platonic sense of trichotomism. What is found in Luke chapter 1 verse 46 to verse 47 arises through the parallelism of Hebraic poetry. Paul uses this distinction to express the superior and inferior spiritual forces that have their roots in the same principle, or else to designate the natural and supernatural vital principle. This manner of speaking of sacred scripture is followed by the fathers. Several expressly reject the doctrine of the two souls, especially in their struggle against the Christological error of Apollinarianism, which is based on trichotomism. Speculatively, the unity of the soul principle in man is shown especially by the testimony of the self-consciousness, according to which the same person is the principle of the rational as of the sensitive and vegetative activities. Body and soul are not connected with each other merely to form an external unity like a vessel and its contents, a ship and its pilot, but as an internal or natural unity so that the spiritual soul is of itself and essentially the form of the body. The Council of Vienna condemned as heretical the thesis that the rational or intellectual soul is not of itself and essentially the form of the human body. The decision was directed against the Franciscan theologian Peter John Olivi, who taught that the rational soul was not of itself the essential form of the body, but only immediately through the former sensitiva and vegetativa, which is really distinct from it. This would destroy the essential unity of human nature, replacing it by a dynamic unity of operation. This decision of the Council of Vienna does not imply a dogmatic recognition of the Thomistic teaching of the uniqueness of the substantial form or of Aristotelian scholastic hylomorphism. Hylomorphism in philosophy is a metaphysical view according to which every natural body consists of two intrinsic principles, one potential, namely primary matter, and one actual, namely substantial form. It was the central doctrine of Aristotle's philosophy of nature. According to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, the bodily matter by virtue of the creation of the soul, which is spiritual according to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 27, becomes a living human body, 
and thus a component part of human nature. According to the vision of Ezekiel, the dead members of the body are awakened to life through the spiritual soul. The fathers conceive the attachment of body and soul as such as intrinsic one that they compare it to the hypostatic union. St. Augustine teaches, From the soul, the body has feeling and life. Hypostatic union is a technical term in Christian theology to describe the union of Christ's humanity and divinity in one hypostasis or individual personhood. In the most basic terms, the concept of hypostatic union states that Jesus Christ is both fully God and fully man. The Fifth General Lateran Council declared against the humanistic Neo-Aristotelians who espoused a veroistic monopsychism and taught that the rational soul is numerically the same in all men and that only this universal soul is immortal. We condemn and reprove all those who maintain that the intellectual soul is mortal or that it is one and the same in all men. The individuality of each soul is an essential presupposition of personal immortality. The idea of retribution in this world appears strongly in the Old Testament Yet, even the oldest of its books profess, as against the assertion of rationalistic criticism, a belief in immortality. According to the view of sacred scripture, life on earth is an exile in a foreign land. The deceased go to their fathers or return to their people, sleep in their fathers. After death, the soul enters the Sheol, that is, a place of collective detention of the departed souls. The newer books, especially the Book of Wisdom, are rich in testimonies of the belief in immortality held by people of Israel. For God created man incorruptible, and to the image of his own eternity he made him. The firm belief in life after death expressed in the New Testament rests on the conviction of personal immortality. Jesus teaches, Fear not those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. These shall go into everlasting punishment, but the just into eternal life. St. Paul believes that he will be united with Christ immediately after his death and not only after the resurrection but i am caught between the two having a desire to be dissolved and to be with christ the doctrine of the death of the soul is unknown in the new testament Who knows if the spirit of man ascends upward, and if the spirit of the beast descends downward, appears to cast doubt on immortality. However, according to the context, 
it refers only to the animal side of man, which is like animal, mortal. The immortality of the soul is proved beyond all doubt by other passages of the book. The fathers not merely unanimously assert the doctrine of immortality, but also establish it philosophically. Origen defends it against Netopsychism, which was widely current in Arabia. Saint Gregory of Nyssa treats it from the philosophic standpoint in his writing, as does Saint Augustine in his monograph. De Immortalitate Anime. Natural reason proves the immortality of the soul from its physical simplicity. As it is not composed of parts, it cannot be resolved into parts. It is true, annihilate the soul, but his wisdom and goodness demand that he should not frustrate the connatural desire of the soul for truth and bliss in the other world, just as his justice demands that he reward the good and punish the wicked in the other world. Please go to YouTube Retirement Mentality channel playlist Divine Act of Creation for the complete series of these materials.